Hello you beautiful people and welcome to another Rickles Fisher video and today as you can see I am in the tent right now we are going for trout and perch and the video today I am going to teach you guys how to catch trout ice fishing. This is going to be real simple and traditional techniques of how to catch fish uh, through the ice. Going to be using some basic gear I mean I have a nice tent here but if you don't have a nice tent you can still get out and catch fish. So I'm going to set up the tripod and I'll start telling you some details of what you'll need to catch trout through the ice. Okay so just real quickly we're going to go through our rod setups. This rod here is nothing fancy. It is a heat wave by 13. It's a 26 medium light. 26 inches that is. And on it I am using some ice fishing line. You can get away with mono. I haven't noticed too much of a difference. I honestly think it's just a sales technique to uh, get a little bit more out of fishing line. I'm using I think 8 pound on here. On the end of it I'm using a little tungsten. You can find these things anywhere. They come in like 4 mil and 5 mil a lot of the time. They come in different sizes as well but these are the most common. But local fishing companies is where you really want to get your stuff. Not only are you going to get a better deal, you're going to be supporting local companies and they'll put you on the right stuff to catch the right fish. So as you can see I have a 4 millimeter tungsten and I'm using a white plastic. This stuff is from Brown's Angling, I'll leave his link below. And as you can see I got it tipped with a mealworm. So bait, not necessary but it will increase your odds. So on this rod I'm just using the 8 pound ice line. And also go a different route and use braided line and then just use like a, a fluorocarbon leader at the end. If you use that technique you're going to get probably more hookups because in deep water you have less stretch in your line so when you do hook into a fish it's going to set the hook a little bit better. I also find that using full fluorocarbon or full monofilament will get you more bites because those fish don't see the braided line and they're more willing to bite it. That's my experience anyways. I also like to put a bell on it and then once you hear the bites then you know you got something in the area. If you're fishing old school, sonar is a great technique also to catch fish. But let's go out and check out the second line. Okay, so as you can see I have a rod holder for dead sticking. This isn't necessary, you can use the snow. But this just is a lot more reliable and it's pretty cool too. These are uh, burbot boards that I made myself. And on this rod, it's just an ugly stick. I believe it's a 28 inch, probably a medium light as well. And we're using ice fishing braided line, which is actually a little bit better than normal braided line. They have some sort of components in it that help keep the ice off your line. And I definitely find that helpful. So we have two different setups. And on this one, we have a hook you can get a lot of places. This is called an atomic tube and it's a glow version. I also have it tipped with a mealworm as well. Scented bait so make sure you're at a lake where you can use bait. Let's drop it back down there. Okay so now that we have our combos out of the way and we will go more in depth on different hooks that you can use for trout but I'm going to mention location. Location is a big thing and it really depends on the trout species you're targeting Say you're targeting lake trout, you're going to be in deeper water, you're going to be looking for structure points that go from, you know, a 50 foot drop off to 80 feet drop offs. You're going to be looking for that deeper water. Also today I am fishing for rainbow trout in deep water and they can be in shallow water as well. It's actually a great place to look for rainbow trout in the early ice fishing season is shallow water. Most trout species you can find them in the shallow water first thing in the ice fishing season. Brook trout you can get up to like one or two feet of water is the prime time zone honestly. So it really depends on what type of species you're targeting but for the most part four to eight feet is a great starting point for trout and today I'm actually in a lot deeper water. This is a kind of a special lake. Um, I'm off a, a drop off from like 15 feet to 25 feet and there's a lot of rainbows and there's some perch down there so we're going to stick to that depth for this video. So a lot of you may not have a sonar. I actually don't have a sonar today. I'm going to get a sonar because sonar fishing definitely makes a difference when you're ice fishing. But if you don't have a sonar, you can definitely figure out an estimate on the depths. All you got to do is drop a heavier hook down the bottom. You reel your rod tip right to the water. And then you take your arm's length, which is depending on how tall you are. Say you're six foot tall. 
then it's a full arm's length of line you pull out at a time and then you can count six feet by six feet by six feet until you get your depth or at least an estimate if you're within a couple feet you're probably pretty well off so combos we're going with the medium lights you can go with a medium heavy as well but i find medium lights to be a lot better for playing the fish out for structure and depth you're looking for drop-offs by weed points by weed beds um, anywhere from depending on what species you're fishing two feet for brook trout six feet for brook trout and you go a lot deeper for lake trout and rainbow trout sometimes really depends where you are and what species you're fishing i know that's kind of vague but if you're looking for a starting point four to eight feet is a great starting point so what lure should you use that is a good question as well i'm going to go through my top three favorite ice fishing lures pretty simple lures actually you can get them most places should get you on some type of trout Okay, so lure number one, which I already showed you, is the Powerbait Atomic Tube Jig. These things are money. You will catch any trout species there is. I've even went to Cold Lake, dropped this thing into like 80 to 100 feet of water, and caught really nice size lake trout on it. This is a Slayer. So you can get different sizes and different colors. They all seem to have their place. I've been catching really nice trout on this 4-inch white tube. So you can definitely upsize. Even for the smaller trout, they'll bite it. I've caught 12 to 14 inch trout on this lure this year. So that is lure number one, the tube jig. So one great technique for using plastics and the small tube jigs that we were speaking about earlier is you're gonna wanna get next to bottom. You kinda drop down and as you can see, well, maybe you can see my line goes slack. So that's where bottom is right there. So you lift it six to 12 inches above bottom and you're not gonna wanna aggressively jig too much but every once in a while you're going to give it a couple jigs like that let it sit still the pauses in between your jigging is usually when the fish will come and bite it three little jigs let it sit if you're not getting any bites just reel up about two turns depending on how deep you are you might not have that much real estate to work with but because we're dealing with deep water today we're able to just give it a couple turns and try up a little bit higher these fish especially the rainbow trout could be in any of the water columns so you definitely want to move your hook around and see what you can find especially when you're not using a sonar if you're using a sonar you see a mark up higher you can reel up to it makes it a lot easier but this is traditional ice fishing so we're just guessing where the fish are fish and blind they call it lure number two and this is a lure that you can definitely call them in if you're not getting much action start ripping this thing around this is a lipless crankbait this one's actually from gbus baits i'll leave his link in the description below as well and if you are not getting a lot for fish bites start ripping this around you cannot go too aggressive with these things lots of people think they're too big they're too loud and they're going to scare fish away but you will call in the smallest and the biggest trout with this lure right here this is like a 2.75 inch i believe and it's slay i've caught some really nice trout on this that brown trout that I caught in an earlier video. If you haven't seen that, go check it out because it was awesome. So that is layer number two, the lipless crank. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes and we haven't had any bites inside the tent. So that immediately makes me think that we need to call them in. There might not be fish in the area until we get this rattle bait down there, zip it around for a little bit. And we might not keep it on for that long, but we're definitely going to do some aggressive jigging, get some fish interested and in the area. And then we might switch back to a small plastic or maybe we'll go with a jigging spoon just so we used all three layers today knot placement is a huge thing you don't want your knot to be far this way or it's going to sit weird or you don't want it to be too far this way you want it to be slightly slanted towards yourself that way you're going to have a nice horizontal presentation just had bites but it's gone now let's see if we can get it to come back Oh, there we go. That's bite. No, oh, I just lost them. There we go again. Fish on. This is a really small one. Oh, it's a nice perch. That's why. Sweet. I think we'll keep this one. Look at that. It's not huge, but that's a good eater size. We got, uh, what do we got here? About nine inches. That's sweet. 
So before I could get to lure number three, I just caught that perch outside. Here I am trying to show you guys how to catch trout through the ice and uh, nice perch bites. That one was just on the brink of being a keeper. So we uh, threw it on the ice and that's a nice nine inch perch going in my belly later. Lure number three. This is the jigging spoon. You can get lots of versions of this. The frostbite dinner bell is a great one. Uh, this one doesn't even have a hook on it. And it really brings fish in from a distance without creating that noise in case the fish are really sketched out and they don't want the rattle. This is your option. You got a good amount of weight to them. You can get them to the bottom quick. You can feel those bites better. With the jigging spoon, you're trying to go for that fluttering action. So it's kind of like, whoo, whoo, and then you let it sit for a second and then another. Whoo, those are my three top ice fishing lures. And next we are going to get into how to land a fish. So the moment we get a rainbow trout on, I'll be back on film. We're going to tie on the frostbite dinner bell, which is a jigging spoon, has a lot of good action. Then we're gonna tip it with a mealworm, nice big juicy mealworm. We're gonna try and get it on all three trebles, but usually you can only get it on two, which is fine. Two works for me. That's a gold jigging spoon. Has a little uh, fluttering piece in the middle that when you're jigging it, it makes it create a lot more action than your average jigging spoon. Just had some bites. I think it's a perch. Usually, oh yeah, there's, there's a fish. I think it might be a keeper perch. Oh yeah. Okay, so. My trout fishing video is turning into a perch video. That's a tad bit smaller than the other one, but we've already kept one, so we'll keep two. Maybe we'll keep three or four if we can get them. The snowstorm came in and the bite just turned off bad. I was really hoping to get some trout, but I'm still gonna make this a video even if I don't get any trout because these are the same techniques that work for trout fishing. And I can show you some clips from the season using the same lures that I talked about today and the same techniques and I hammered some trout so this is what works it's just not working today. Oh,